Like a Dragon, a series about shirtless Japanese men fighting atop a skyscraper. Well, there's a bit more to it than that. Like a Dragon, or as the series was known for a long time in the West as Yakuza, has many great games. But with the newest game releasing soon, like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, you might be looking to get into the franchise. This video will act as kind of a guide to that, also a little bit of a retrospective on the series itself. So for those not in the know, how would I describe the Like a Dragon games? Well, most people would classify the games as action brawlers. You could describe them as modern 3D versions of games like Streets of Rage. Sega even made a small crossover game called Streets of Camarocho. But the games have always had RPG elements, such as upgrade systems, equipment, consumables, and even dungeons. So, I have personally always called this series an action RPG. Well, until the 7th mail entry, where it became a full blown RPG with turn based combat and a party system. The series mostly follows one Kazuma Kiryu, a Yakuza with a heart of gold, and whose arc in the majority of later games can best be described as Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Some of the games also have multiple playable characters. The seventh entry, along with changing up the gameplay, also changed the protagonist to one Ichibon Kasuga. Before we start, I will be using the names Yakuza and Like a Dragon interchangeably since Like a Dragon is what the series was called in Japan, but in the West most of the games are called Yakuza until the past few games, where it is also now Like a Dragon. So a lot of the older games are still called Yakuza like Yakuza 3 for example. But the series will be called Like a Dragon going forward. So yeah, we'll be using them interchangeably. I bet you're wondering, how will I be ranking the series? Well, a good old tier list. We have the top tier, called the best. Then a good place, difficult start, not recommended, don't start here, and no. I will be mostly ranking these games on how good of an entry point it is to the series. But the game's overall quality will be a factor, as well as how accessible the game is to play in the current day. We will go through the series in mostly release order. I will also be grouping some games together, but I'll explain my reasoning for that as we go through them. Let's start with the first two games, Yakuza 1 and 2. I'm putting the first Yakuza game in, don't start here. This is for two big reasons. One is accessibility. Yakuza 1 and 2 never got modern re-releases, meaning you can't play it on modern platforms. This leads into my second point. Yakuza 1 and 2 got remakes, which are mechanically better games and are easily accessible. 2 I'm putting in Don't Start Here, since it's a direct sequel to the original and has the same issues as Yakuza 1. Next is Ryogotu Kenzin, a spin off set in the Edo period of Japan. Never played this game, since it never made it outside Japan. Since it is a spin off, it can be a good starting point, since it's its own standalone story. But it's just not available in English, and is only available on the PS3. 
so this means it's going in not recommended. Next I'm grouping Yakuza 3 to 5 together, since you can buy them in a collection. Good news, these games are available to buy on most modern platforms through their remastered form, but these games do take place in the middle of Kiryu's story. For the record, Yakuza 3 on the PS3 was my entry to the series. So you can start in the middle if you want to, but 3 to 5 are mechanically the oldest games you can still buy. So with that into consideration, I'm putting them all in, don't start here. Since we grouped three games together, we missed some of the spin-offs. First we got Black Panther Like a Dragon, released on the PSP. This game never got a western release, but it did get an unofficial English patch. Since this game was released on the PSP, they had to change some things up, like the game mostly be focused on one-on-one -on -one fights. This game's story is mostly standalone with no real bearing on the overall Yakuza plot. I'll put this game in not recommended. Yakuza Dead Souls is the next one up. It's a non-canon game with zombies. Yeah, there's a reason this game never got a re-release on other platforms. It's just a subpar zombie and Yakuza game. This is going in no. I don't think it's even worth playing. Black Panther 2 I'm putting in Don't Start Here. You probably won't play the game before you play the first one. Ryu Gotru Ishin. This game never got a western release, but it did get a remake that did. So I'll put this one in Don't Start Here. ダンジョンタロンジョンから。私もお酒いただこうかしら。もちろん。乾杯。お財布忘れちゃって。ああ。ただし、龍が如くをプレイする際には注意の環境にくれぐれもご注意ください。龍が如く、ワンアンド 2。Before we get to the next game, we need a bit of context of how well this series was doing in the West. The Yakuza series was struggling in the West to find a larger audience outside of some dedicated hardcore fans. Yakuza 5 did not look like it was going to get a worldwide release. It did eventually, three years later, Digitally only through the PlayStation Network. This leads next in to Yakuza 0, which is the prequel to the original series. Which means it's a great place to start. It's also available on most modern platforms. You also get two playable characters, Kiryu and fan favourite Majima. This game kickstarted the modern rise in popularity in the series. So with all that in mind, I'm putting Yakuza 0 in the best. After Yakuza 0 we got Yakuza Kwame, which is a remake of the original game. Unlike the original, this one is available on most platforms, making it the best way to play the story of the first game. But it's also worth noting that Kwame is not just a remake of the first game, but a sequel to Zero. What that means for the player is that it can affect some of the side content, maybe continuations from Zero. Also, mechanically, the game is a direct sequel to Zero. But with all that in mind, I'm putting Kiwami in a good place to start. We now move on over to Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. Being the sixth game in the franchise, or technically seventh, 
now that has a prequel. This was meant to be the end of Kiryu's story, but things didn't quite work out that way. It's also easy to purchase, with it also being available on most platforms. This game does a lot of quality of life stuff over 3 to 5, but with it being pretty late into the franchise and sort of requiring to play most of the other games, I'm putting this in a difficult start. We got another remake in Yakuza Kiwami 2, which is a remake of Yakuza 2. The gameplay is similar to 6 of it being kind of a mechanical sequel to that game. So it plays well and is easily accessible if you want to play it. But it would still be weird to start with this one over Yakuza 0 and Kiwami, which means it's going and not recommended. Hey Look is a spin-off in a world completely disconnected from the Like a Dragon series, Fist of the North Star, Lost Paradise. A game based on the Fist of the North Star manga slash anime. This Fist of the North Star game uses the Like a Dragon gameplay and formula. With some Fist of the North Star flair. This means you don't have to play the other Like a Dragon games to play this one. But you should probably be familiar with the Fist of the North Star series to play this one. So I'm going to put this one in not recommended. Well, well, well. It's another spin off. This one's set in the Like a Dragon world. But you don't need to play the other games in the franchise to play this one. It's Judgment. This time, we head over to the other side of the law. As we play as Yagami, a private investigator who used to be a lawyer who knows Kung Fu. This is a great way to get into the greater franchise. By getting a taste of the setting and the tone of the series. But there's not too much crossover between Judgment and the greater Like a Dragon series. Well, not so far. I'm going to put this one in a good place. Yakuza Like a Dragon. Or as some fans call it, Yakuza 7. Mixing the game titles from Japan and the West. The big difference in this game is that it is now a turn-based RPG. You will play as new protagonist Ichiban. This game mostly follows new characters but there are some legacy characters that appear and play a role in the story. Meaning it's more closely tied to the greater franchise than Judgment. But that should not stop you from starting here. Especially if you prefer turn based combat. Which means it's going in a good place. Lost Judgment. A direct sequel to Judgment. While being a better game than Judgment, by improving the combat and moving away from the elements that did not work in the last game, I would not recommend starting this one over Judgment. I feel like you miss a lot for not having the context in the first game, so it's going in not recommended. Like a Dragonetian, the first game to fully adopt the Like a Dragon name in the West. This is a remake of Ryugotaro Ishin, a game I mentioned earlier in this video. This is a Like a Dragon game set in the late Edo period, meaning it's standalone as well. Also, you can actually play this one in the West, also on modern platforms. But with the game being set in a different time period, beyond the gameplay and tone, it won't give you much to go on for the overall series itself. So it's going in difficult start. We now look at the latest game, Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. That title may just be a tad bit too long. This game is a spin-off that takes place parallel to Yakuza 7, which was originally meant to be a DLC for that game. You want more players kill you, and we return to the action gameplay. This game will also bridge the gap between Yakuza Like a Dragon and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. This game, while great, kind of requires you to play most of the mainline games in the series before you go on to play this one. So it's going in, don't start here. 
Well, that's my list. Do you agree with me? Or think I'm talking a lot of bollocks? Let me know. But hey, I'm looking forward to Infinite Wealth. In fact, I'll probably be streaming it right here on YouTube. When it comes out. Also, I do some streams now. I normally stream over the weekend. But I don't really have a set schedule. So watch that if you're interested, I guess. Well, that was the end of the video. Thank you for watching. You'll see a recommended video and other things like that soon. Also, like, comment. Subscribe, whatever. Do or don't, I can't really control what you do with that, to be honest. But hey, tell me anybody how about I just something like this. Maybe think about clicking one of those links and on the screen if you have the option for that one. If not, well, well, I think that's enough for now. Toodaloo.